everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and today I'm going to do a quick review of my Kubota disc bind. I'm getting ready to put it away for the winter. So I wanted to take you around the mower and show you some of the good and bad things uh, about it. I have had this mower for six years. So this is a six year review of the mower. So let's get into it. Okay, so here it is, my Kubota DMC 8028T. Keep in mind that all the information I'm sharing with you today in this video is based on this mower. It is six years old, so they may have changed some of the things that we're gonna discuss here, but I'm gonna mention them anyway in case they haven't changed them or maybe they did upgrade them and you'll be able to notice if you happen to look at a new one or if you're looking at a used one, you'll be able to see the same things that I'm seeing. So 8028T, um, I don't really know what the 8028 means, but the T is for time conditioning. There uh, used to be, maybe still is, an 8028R uh, with the, for the rollers. Um, I went with the tines. I do mostly grass hay, and they work fantastic for that. So like I said, I've had this mower six years. It's actually, let's see if I can get you guys in here. If you can see, I know there's a bad reflection there. There we go. So it was produced in 2014, model year 2015. I bought it in 2016. So again, I've had it six years, but uh, you can see, I think it was one of the first generations. You can see it has still has a Kaverlin Group sticker on it, I, or uh, tag on it. I think those now say Kubota, but I'm not sure. Uh, this was one of the first generations to come out after Kubota bought Vicon and all the Kaverlin stuff and whatnot. So if you happen to see that on a tag, if you're looking at one of these mowers, an older one, whatever, that's why. So let's talk a little bit. We'll start at the front here. So this is obviously a two point uh, swivel hitch. So it has a gearbox here. Uh, previous mowers that I've had have been draw bar without the swivel. And I do a lot of smaller odd shaped fields and the draw bar was really annoying. You couldn't cut close enough because you'd be kinking the PTO shaft. So this uses a shaft to a gearbox and then this gearbox swivels. So you can, you can cut this right around to the point where your rear tire is gonna hit the tongue. I mean, you can loop right around it. It works really great. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain to hook up by yourself. Um, I guess on a newer tractor, it wouldn't be. This tractor is a 1990 model and uh, I don't think it has the telescopic links. And if it does, they're stuck. So if you had a little bit more adjustability on your three point uh, than I do, it'd be a little bit easier. But basically a jack comes down here and you just set that down and you unhook everything. Um, the design of this is really nice. As you can see, I, again, I'm ready to put this away. I greased everything up. So I didn't bother to hook the PTO shaft back up, but they have a nice holder there to keep it out of the way. Uh, they have, of course, your, the mower has uh, a full light package on it, turn signals, all that stuff. I've just got this wrapped up because I haven't taken it on the road recently. So I just keep that out of the way so it doesn't fall down and get tangled in anything. Uh, the hoses here, they give you nice holders here on each side. I usually put whatever goes on the right side I hook on here and then I, they give you four more on the other side. I hook those in there. So that's really nice. There is a uh, little like toolbox here. Um, there actually is a few wrenches and things in there. Those came with the mower. Not exactly sure what they're for. I've uh, never had to use them. But uh, yeah, so you got a little toolbox there, which is pretty cool. And uh, of course, grease fittings on the PTO shaft. You have gearbox oil here. There's two gearboxes to service. Um, so a couple of complaints I have. The PTO shafts, um, and we'll, we'll look at the other one after, but the way that the covers are designed on these PTO shafts, uh, I actually had to cut extra little notches out here and there. You can see, I'll show you real quick here like this. I had to cut that back because uh, it was very difficult to access the grease fittings. So, you know, maybe the PTO shafts are from a different company now, I don't know, but that was a real pain finding all the grease fittings in the beginning. Most of them are marked, but some of them are difficult to find. 
Um, another thing that's a little bit of a annoyance here, and I haven't had an issue uh, with it, but these hoses, um, they look good here, but in certain situations where the mower's tipped, they stretch right out. I've never had one pull out, but it's been close. So I wish these hoses were a little bit longer. There's on the other ends of them here, here's the other ends. You can see these guys are pulled pretty tight. There's a tiny bit of slack in the other two, but these two are pulled pretty darn tight. So there really isn't any way to get any more slack. You know, you have your little clamps here, you could loosen and pull, but uh, there's no more slack to be had. So, you know, to me, the hoses should be six inches to a foot longer than they are, especially depending on where your hydraulic remotes are. Some of the bigger tractors, the remotes are up a lot higher and you know your distance here might be different so that's one complaint i have same thing that's one of the reasons uh you can see that there's a little piece of this missing uh this has actually pulled out of the plug on me before making tight turns the wire wasn't isn't quite long enough either same thing so hopefully on the newer models they changed that and made these just a little bit longer um but uh for me i you know they're a little bit short so these mowers are available at either 1000 RPM PTO or 540. I opted for the 540 just because that's the shaft that normally is on the tractor. I mean, these tractors, all you have to do is take the shaft out, flip it around and put it back in. But every other implement I have is 540. So I just didn't want to be dealing with that, having to flip the shaft every time I was going to mow. So I opted to go with the 540. Uh, but again, there was a thousand available. So coming around to the other side of the mower, they also give you a safety chain here that you can hook. Um, I just have a little clevis thing put in there. So there's that, the jack. So yeah, they have most of the grease fittings marked for you, but not all of them. So uh, coming back on the side of the mower again, grease fittings are marked. There's some uh, shields here that fold up nice. This mower cuts just over nine foot. Uh, I don't remember the exact the exact cut on it uh, and of course that's not folded down perfectly um, but uh, we're just doing a video here so but uh, yeah so the, the shields fold up nice so it fits real nice going down the road so then we have you know more grease fittings marked now there is one goofy spot here that uh, I hope they changed I don't know can you guys see that universal in there there's a universal joint right in front of you um, now it I don't believe it fact flexes left to right at all it's basically a vertical shaft and you can see the top of it right there but um, there's a grease fitting on the top of this shaft but there is not a grease fitting on that actual universal so i usually spray uh right now i have fluid film on there but i usually will spray some kind of lithium grease or something in there on it i don't know if it matters or not but there is no grease fitting there and it's the original universal so i guess it's okay but it just is kind of weird to me that uh, there was no grease fitting there but uh, as i said it came with the full light package on it uh, turn signals uh, running lights so here in the rear there's our time conditioning Never had an issue with any of that. Uh, one of the complaints I do have is just in trying to clean the mower up. I don't know if you can see there's some hay and crap down there. Like the way that this is designed so close, you can't get in there to clean anything or service anything uh, without basically taking the darn tire off. Um, so again, super minor little thing, but um, It'd just be nice if it was designed a little bit differently. The tires on the mower are a nice big size. I know they look small on camera here. Let me see if I can find the size. It is a 1555-17. So it's a nice big wide tire. Uh, never had an issue with the mower sinking or anything when it's wet. So definitely no complaints about that. Uh, previous to this, uh, my first mower I had was a John Deere disc bind. Uh, that was a good machine, but it just got kind of old. I upgraded to a New Holland uh, disc bind. I think it was a 2007 model. Um, absolutely hated that thing. And uh, then I bought this instead. I traded that in and bought this mower. So there is a uh, adjustable tail on here and your row width 
you can see those guys there up here these are adjustable for your row width here i just have them set all the way in uh, this mower even if you open them all the way it still doesn't spread the hay out the width of the cutter bar there's actually a kit called a widespread kit that you can get from Kubota I'm not exactly sure what it does I've thought about buying it in the past but you can actually put that on the mower and it will allow you to pretty much uh, drop the hay on the ground roughly I think it's about the width of the tires so it spreads it out a lot more rather than putting it in a windrow um, so if you're interested in something like that I know in the past there has been a kit available for that um, so coming around here there is a valve up here that you lock for transport it's basically your height adjustment lock so you lift the mower all the way up and we actually have to turn that because i'm going to be putting it away uh, and that locks the mower in the up position again for transport so this mower does have obviously hydraulic up and down and uh, it hydraulically moves in and out so I think most, most disc spines do, but it, the way it trails behind the tractor, it works really nice that you can adjust. If you have different tractors and uh, or on, you know, you're mowing on a hill or something and the off tracking, the mower's a little bit off, you can adjust the mower very easily side to side to stay cutting the maximum amount of material. So again, I think a lot of them do that, but this one just seems to trail a little bit nicer. It may just be the design of the tongue and everything. It trails nicer than any mower I've had. Um, it also mows much cleaner than any mower I've ever had. Uh, one of the reasons I went with Kubota, not just because I like Kubota equipment, um, I actually saw one of these at our local fair before I even bought one. And as soon as I saw it, I'm like, I think that's the mower for me. And I'm gonna show you why in a minute, but uh, in a normal season, which we haven't had for a few years, I can get as many as four cuttings of grass hay. Um, so that means that, you know, further on in the year, your third, fourth cutting, it tends to be a little bit thinner. And as anybody who's run disc binds know, you can have streaking issues. And uh, I had a lot of that with the New Holland, but um, I saw this mower and I knew that I wasn't gonna have the issues that I had in the past. So let me show you this real quick. This is actually how you, you can open this front up here there's a clip here and a clip here and lift that up and swing it around here hang on a second okay there we go so this is not my favorite design here it's kind of goofy it's kind of awkward i mean it, it sort of gets that out of your way so you don't have uh the lid sort of in you know up above you but I think I would prefer if that lid opened up out of the way rather than kind of coming over here. It's a little bit awkward. They have this goofy chain thing that stretches from all the way the heck over there to over there. Um, I mean, the least they could have done was move the thing over here or something. It's just, it's, it's very awkward um, to, to open that. It, the lid's heavy, um, but anyway, it, it does kind of get it out of your way a bit, but I think a better design would just be, I think kind of what everybody else has where the lid just folds up. Um, while we're talking about that, the front apron cover does have weights on it. I don't know if you can see them there uh, to kind of help hold that down. I have never had anything come back at the tractor. Not to say that it couldn't, but I've never had an issue with that. And you can see the cover still in good condition. So getting back to the reason why I bought this mower, um, we have a three blade design and I knew that this was going to cut finer material better than any mower that I had. Now I know there's a lot of mowers out there that will cut fine material without an issue, but I like the three blade design. Um, yes, it takes a little while to change all the extra blades, but I think it's a, a good design and it cuts cleaner than any mower that I've, I've had in the past. So. Uh, right now I got fluid film sprayed all over everything just again because I'm tucking it in for the winter. So it gives you a little chart here about tightening down the blades uh, for your oil, kind of how to check the cutter bar oil. 
you have an adjustment here for the aggressiveness oops sorry show you those a little closer it's starting to rain out here so i'm getting distracted but you have a little chart here an adjustment there is um basically like a swiveling hood inside the mower and these are your tines that go around that condition the material you're putting through so you can adjust that um, there's different settings obviously the closer you go to the tines the more aggressive it's going to sort of chop at the material um, i believe i have it set all the way on the most aggressive setting all the way back just because uh, i always do i've never noticed an issue of course i've always had a lot of horsepower on this mower but I've never had an issue getting in heavy material and having the mower bogged down or anything. I mean, I've cut stuff as tall as the mower, which is, you know, five foot tall right now. And uh, it's, it's never bogged anything down. I've never broken anything with it uh, being in, in the tall material, even with this set all the way down. Uh, dry time, I think it dries just as well as uh, a machine with rolls the other machines i've had have had the rubber rolls in them uh well the john deere didn't that had the tine conditioning as well i think it dries the same i know some people feel that the tines in alfalfa and similar crops knock the leaves off i can't tell you one way or the other because i don't do alfalfa i have been told by some folks that do have tine conditioners that if you set it to uh a not very aggressive setting on the conditioning it doesn't seem to bother the material but i cannot speak uh, whether that's true or not i don't know uh, i just know in the grass hay that i do i've had uh, very good success with the mower and then on this side here we also have another nice shield that folds down simple pop that guy out and boom so again for road transport it uh, folds right up one little pin in and out so that is a quick overview of my kubota mower six-year review uh sorry i don't have a little bit more detail but it is starting to rain out here and the video is getting kind of long so if you have any questions about the mower i will do my best to answer them you know i'm not a mechanic i'm not a salesman but i can tell you my experiences um i have not had any breakdowns on this machine whatsoever the only things i've done to it are maintenance items greasing changing oil and gear boxes and in the in the cutter bar um what else have i done to it i uh, haven't had to do tires oh uh knives on the cutter head and we'll have to do another set of those in the spring but it, it's all been maintenance items uh, i haven't had any major breakdowns i can say that one thing that i will have to do probably soon is uh these hydraulic hoses here i don't know if you can see with the raindrops they're getting kind of cracked uh, that's a little disappointing you know i know the machine's a little bit older now but for the most part it always sits inside when it's not in use so it's not like it sits out in the sun and gets stored outside i mean they're not leaking or anything yet but it is a little disappointing but other than that, like I said, I had no breakdowns with it. Uh, I know a lot of guys are concerned of the quality or how the mower is going to hold up. I know some people obviously have had some issues with them. And um, the only issue I guess I did have was when I first got it, um, the dealer I got it from had transferred it from another dealership. And my dealer thought that the other dealer had done all the setup work that needs to be done before one of these is delivered to a customer, and they did not. So the cutter bar was in a transport position rather than a field position. There was a couple bolts that had to be moved. They came out and did it for me. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that wasn't a breakdown thing. It was just uh, a setup thing. Um, but uh, so if you do have an issue, make sure that the dealer has gone through all the proper steps to set up the machine for you. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, no issues with it. This mower has cut roughly 400 acres a year, uh, with the exception of this year. We've cut back a lot on hay production. Um, so it didn't see 400 acres this year. So that gives you an idea of the use. We are not a large farm here. So guys that are looking to cut, you know, 1,000, 2,000 acres a year with it, I honestly can't tell you how it's going to hold up, whether you're going to have issues or failures or anything. Um, you know, I can only speak for 
the machine that I've had and the acres that I've run it. I've had no bearings go out, just no issues whatsoever with it. I've showed you guys everything uh, about the machine, uh, good or bad, that I could think of. So anyway, um, as I said, <laughs> questions, comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe, the bell icon, and if you would, the thumbs up on your way out the door. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you all in the next video.